G'day guys and welcome back to Fat Rides Garage. Apologies again for not putting up much content, but I have a reason and I wasn't going to mention it. I wasn't going to bring it up, but I feel that because there's been such a delay on the, on the build on the coop, I thought it's only right that I let you guys know that part of the reason why there's been a delay in me putting out content is I got a little bit trigger happy on eBay and I saw this thing. Nissan 300ZX and I just thought it was going too cheap and that I needed to take care of it. Now, don't ask me why because I'm not even into these cars. I mean, it's like um, a million miles away from the coupe and the Chevy and everything else. But something about it just appealed to me and I don't know. Call me an idiot, I've been called it before. But yeah, it seemed to be going too cheap so I thought I'd uh, snatch it up and um, once I saw it in person, I realized why it was going so cheap. So, hence to say, don't buy sight unseen. Just stop it. Don't do it anymore, you know? Put them child locks on that eBay and just stay away from it. Anyway, I've got it. I've ended up with it. And so I decided to dig into it and figure out everything that it needed. So, it uh, first of all with the engine it wasn't running properly so I sprayed a bunch of um, some sort of like cleaning stuff through one of the uh, the vacuum lines and that started to sort of like clear it up a little bit where it would run a little bit better um, but in the end it had a massive water leak uh, and what else oh well let's just say it had a massive water leak so I found that in order to get the water pump off these things you've got to pull half the engine apart so while all the front of it was off, I decided to replace the timing belt. And um, so it was a timing belt, thermostat, uh, water pump, and uh, yeah, I'll put it all back together. Then I decided to do a service. So just the usual, you know, your fuel filter, um, air cleaner, um, oil filter, and new oil. And um, yeah, got it running a lot smoother. Um, and what else? Yeah, so as far as the interior went, it was all trashed, it was all pulled apart. Um, the original dash pad was, had massive cracks for it. Um, it looked like this car had basically been parked on the side of the road for 10 years in the hot sun. So yeah, all the dash pad all completely cracked and everything. Um, the upholstery, which is not original, is pretty faded in the back. Um, so with this pad, the guy that I bought it off, he had, an, he had a separate uh, dash pad, which the vinyl was okay, it wasn't cracked, but all the backing of it was broken. So whether the car had been an accident or something, I don't know, but yeah, all the plastic framework behind it was broken. So I just sat down and spent a day on it, you know, doing plastic welding and stuff. Um, my first attempt actually using those hot staples and plastic welding and um, turned out all right. So we got that sort of fixed up. Um, at the moment I'm waiting um, for a couple of brake pedal stoppers to put in before I reassemble the dash. Um, what else? Oh yeah, so it had rust. It had a massive hunk of rust here, which um, was basically from where the spoiler bolt's on. So you see these holes where the spoiler bolt's through? Well, there was one there and it turned to crap and uh, rusted out completely. Uh, all right, so that's the piece that, that rusted out. So, I wasn't gonna bog that up. Anyway, I sort of got to making this piece here, which is gonna fit in as so, and um, I'll weld it in. So at the moment, I'm just sort of fixing the backing part, and, uh, and then we'll get that welded in. And yeah, I don't know, I mean, I'm sort of like, got all the way into this, and I sort of thought, oh, you know, maybe I should have filmed this, because, you know, even though it's not really the car that a lot of you guys would be interested in, it's, um, yeah, it's still work, <laughs> anyway too late so yeah so I think the thing that I probably want to do on this thing is get the boot lid sorted that's one thing that I haven't touched on this car um, so I think that's what we'll do next we'll jump into that uh, but before we do I just want to thank all you guys that have uh, supported the channel over the last year uh, whether you've viewed it or subscribed it thank you very very much uh, and I do hope that you did have a good Christmas and probably not going to make another video before the new year so I wish you all a happy new year for 2023 as well so uh, without further ado let's just jump into it So 
So I'm going to have to uh, obviously tear this old skin off, clean the frame up, patch any areas that have rusted through on the frame, prime it, etc., etc. But what I do have here, um, which is yeah something really nice, is a brand new uh, coupe uh, boot lid skin. God, that's hard to say. Falcon coupe boot lid skin, and that's I find that really hard to say quickly. But anyway. It looks like a really nice, uh, nice piece, and uh, that actually came from uh, Southern Classics and Customs. Um, guy called An uh, Adam Vanderlinden uh, runs it, and uh, those guys do absolutely unreal work down there. Um, can't speak highly enough of them. You can check them out uh, on Facebook, and uh, they've also got a website, uh, Southern Classics and Customs. They're down in Adelaide, uh, and I'll probably put a one of Adam's videos, he, he made a short video uh, for YouTube which is about fitting one of these skins so I'll put this at the end and um, you can check that out hopefully but yeah so I think the first thing is probably get this thing all prepped, get some primer on it and uh, then put it aside and then we'll go to work on the frame on this and get it all ready so yeah we'll jump into that. So that gets the frame disconnected from the skin. And even your acid dipping or chemical dipping doesn't get everywhere as you can see. So that's going to need a, a real good clean up but that's no problem. It's on the whole, the majority of it is sound. I've just got some Swiss cheese up here um, but I'll be able to get that fixed up. Now, 99.9.8.1% of you are probably wondering why I didn't just grind the edges and be done with, you know, when you're scrapping an old skin, that's what you normally do. Well, the answer is that originally when I was chatting to Adam at um, Southern Classics and Customs, um, he suggested using one of these tools when I go to fold, fold over the lip on the new skin and when I was looking at these the same place that makes them made these which is actually the tool for removing a skin and I simply just wanted to try it out and I think it did the job I mean of course it's you know you've got all your little you know dimples or stretches or what have you which you would have got anyway if you'd done it by hand um, but this was just way way faster so yeah, it was a good experiment. I think that worked well. The other advantage of it is that even though the skin is knackered, it is only the top surface that's knackered. All the bottom part of it is solid. So basically from here backwards is all solid. So I sort of thought, you know, just put it away. Just put it away nicely. You never know someone might want it in the future or I might be able to use it in the future because sometimes it's the back part of the skin that's rotted anyway and chances are it's probably not a very big chance but anyway there you go so next step yeah we have to fix all this up so hmm about the rust do I muck around with that rust removing gel or do I simply use a scotch bright plaid and clean it all up as best I can and put rust converter on it or 
do I take it out and use the little pot blaster to simply blast it clean? I think I'll blast it. This, the metal is fairly thick from what I can feel, apart from over here, of course, which I'm going to have to replace that part and all of that. So I think we'll be fine if I just go ahead and blast it, so that's what we'll do. And in essence, um, probably sending this away to get dipped was a waste of money. However, I didn't know that in the first place. I was not planning for it to come back um, so ratty, like with the holes that is. So yeah, in hindsight, um, probably could have just uh, got away with leaving it as it was, saved a couple hundred bucks and just simply did what I just did, remove the skin, clean everything up with a sandblaster and put a new skin on. So lesson learned, hopefully. Geez, they, they really did try hard to get the sealer in all the wrong places. Isn't that meant to be up here? And that up there, and this one meant to be along here? Yeah, wow. Whoever put that on was obviously on the turps. Okay, so get rid of all of that, get the pop blaster set up and we'll blast him. And then I'll be able to prime, no, I'll blast them, I'll fix the rust, and then we'll be able to prime both of these together. So that'll be good. All right, so I've been over this, uh, this frame and I, I found a, a few pinholes here, here, here. Um, and uh, yeah, so it was basically surrounded by solid steel. It was just basically a pinhole. So I just went ahead and welded them up. There was one here, one in the corner. But along here, this is um, pretty much rotted out. So I'm gonna have to replace this section here. So we'll go ahead and we'll scribe her out. We'll get our general shape and then I'll cut the cut the old stuff out. We'll see how we go. Just trying to come back to something pretty solid. I mean, I don't want to replace the whole thing. You know, it's just just doing only what I absolutely need to. Because once this is sandblasted and it's all clean metal and it's epoxied, there's no reason why any of this should ever come back again. Hope this mark is any. Oof, okay, I think I can follow that. I flunk tech drawing, but I always knew these would come in handy one day. However, so put that there and like so, we have our shape. Looks skinnier there than it does there. Right, now if I go and cut that in the shears, I wonder if it's going to go curly. Perfect, it's even curving up the right way, I think, yeah. Okay, so if I put that there like that. Is that what I want? I think it's what I want. 
I'm pretty sure it's what I want. Well, it's what I'm gonna get. Ta da! Okay. My next trick cut that out without ballsing it up. Mm. Okay, here we go. Well, that thing's got no power whatsoever. So I'll just cut outside the line and just sand back to it. Just stay there. Try to close my helmet, <laughs> which is sitting there. Oh, this is what you you got to be careful about when you tack, and it tightens. Like it almost moved that whole thing across, so I'm gonna make sure you get everything in line where it's meant to be. All right, so got that all fixed up, looking rather nice, and it was a little bit easier than I thought, which was always good. So I haven't looked underneath it actually, but yeah, not bad. Um, let's just tip her over. Okay. So you can see it's had good penetration on the majority of it. It's a little bit there. Could have better penetration. Okay, I'm gonna to have to put, I'm gonna put a little bit more weld on that because I'm just not happy with it. Yeah, just that little piece there. And then clean these other ones off. Okay, I'll do that. this um, all cleaned up. Now the main thing I don't like to see is where there's no penetration at all, in which case what you end up seeing is just simply a line which is the join between the two bits of steel and even though it's fully welded on the other side I just didn't want to see that line so I just went back and just um, re-tacked those areas and then plenished it off and now it's looking fairly clean. There's just, you know, it's slight um, 
slight marks here and there from the weld but what I'll do is now I've um, gone ahead and, and also I've fixed up where there were a few hairline cracks around where the hinges bolt on which is fairly common and then um, there were a couple of dents so I've just knocked those dents out plenished, plenished it up and I think now it's ready to give it a bit of a blast so we'll take it outside use the pot blaster we'll give it a blast and then we'll come back to you once we've done that all right here we are after um, giving her a quick blast outside it's all looking uh, pretty good so I'm all ready to spray primer on it now and um, I've uh, just taped off the little spots where I'm going to be um, using the spot welder just as per original and um, same on the, uh, the skin here so go ahead and mix up some uh, epoxy and we'll get a couple of coats on this. All right, so I actually decided to put a just a coat of two-pack black on there just to help seal up the primer. I don't know if that's the right thing to do or not, but anyway. Uh, and then I just thought of something. I never actually did a trial fit. Oops. Uh, okay, well hopefully it'll be all right. So we'll just um, we'll just see if they go together. Okay. And that's all it needed, just a little bit of persuasion. So, I guess, I don't know. Do I fit it to the gun? All right, so that's just a rough fit up. And the gap up there is looking okay. This one here is a little tight, obviously. Uh, I think that where it opens up a little bit, that's my quarter panel, that's not the boot lid. Uh, the boot lid there, I'm gonna have to sort of add a little bit just on the bottom there. It's just a little bit, a little bit open, but um, that's nothing. And then the back here is actually, like as they all are, you know, a bit of an extra wide gap. And, and I don't think that I even got this, um, this uh, panel correct. I was concentrating so much on getting it to match my rear window. I didn't put so much effort into getting it to match the boot lid. Uh, but now that I've got a new skin and everything, I'll be able to sort of revisit that later on. But um, yeah, from what I'm seeing, uh, it's not too far off just a matter of um, just go ahead and fold the skin over I guess okay so far so good
All right, so I'm ready now that I've um, I've been around and you know tidied it up. I put a few little uh, mig welds in the corners and um, been over the edges as you saw with that little machine that folds the lip, which is pretty damn handy. It brings it down nice and flush. Um, yeah, so pretty much that's it, and I'm just ready to do the spot welds. So got this little um, copper plate here to put on behind and um, see if we can if that's going to work. Is it going to work? Yeah, it's going to work. All right, whack a few spot welds on. Hmm. Okay, it's going to be like that. So there's basically just two spot welds in every corner. So the copper obviously stops, you know, the outside skin getting um, any sort of mark from the welder. And that's it. All done. Well, there we have it, guys. The coop boot lid has been reskinned, and uh, oh, it's not light. It's come out all right for an amateur, I guess. Uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm really happy with it. Damn sight better than what I had, anyway. I made, I did make a couple little mistakes admittedly, I've got, I've ended up with a little dent here, not sure if that's from the machine or from my dolly, but overall it's not major compared to what, you know, what we've ended up with. And is, this was my first attempt, so you know what it's like, you get better if you do a few more, you would hope anyway, but no, she's good. So I'm not going to worry about, you know getting it primed and everything in this episode because I, I just don't want the episode to be too long and you know what's going to happen I'm going to prime it and then just put it on the car and that's it so yeah end of story so anyway look guys thanks for watching and once again um, thank you to uh, to Adam at uh, Southern Classics and Customs Adam and his guys sorry they're a team down there they do great work uh, thanks Adam and also thanks Adam for your tips after I bought the skin off you um, regarding the fitting and everything um, so yeah anyway guys look thanks for watching thanks for supporting the channel this year and I hope that you're all enjoying your holidays or at least the Christmas season and um, looking forward to making new videos in 2023 so have a happy new year and we'll catch up with you then These are the new boot skins from Southern Classics and Customs, hand fabricated. Just a bit of a tutorial video on how to fit the um, handmade boot skins. It's the original boot here, typically rusted on the corners, usually on the skin on the frame too. Here we're de-skinning the, the original skin from the boot skin, linishing down the edge so that you can peel open the edges like, like you see here. From there you can peel the skin from the frame and the small inner lip there as well. You can remove that. From here we're just cleaning up all the inside of the frame. You can either have it blasted or acid dipped. Um, probably quicker way but this is um, where we had the boot lip blasted before we stripped it so cleaning it up manually. Just see the rust in the corners of the boot frame, pretty common. So from there we repair up those rusty corners.
nice and clean on the inside now. We'll cut it out, weld it up. Nice clean steel. From here we still do trial fits of the skin to make sure the frames are repaired properly. Once uh, it's all cleaned up, coat of epoxy. Primer inside the frame and inside the boot lid skin as well. From there we two pack paint, it's just a satin black. Pretty much as per factory spec uh, looking. It's probably just a little bit better coverage like this and uh, better, better protection for the future. Then we remove around the edge of the bonnet frame uh, the black paint uh, in spots and copper spray, copper weld through prime spray. Uh, once again, trial fit the boot lid on the frame, trial fit it to the car, just checking gaps. First fit's really nice. And there we're applying sealer. We use a Worth brand sealer, uh, seam sealer. Applying all the factory spots around the frame and a thin skim around the edge of the frame as well. Uh, starting at the back of the boot lid, at the bottom edge, uh, feeding it in, fitting to the skin. Sits nice and tight in place. From there we just hammer around the edges to about a 45 degree angle, just by hand. This gives it a good start. Uh, we did do a trial fit between this process, but here this is a, a reskinning tool that we're using here, an air tool you can purchase. Um, you'd probably want to hammer the skin probably 80% 80, 80 of the way down before uh, going over the tool, but this is nice finished uh, boot skin here with the skin being rolled all the way around. Um, just showing you how the boot skins fit. Nice alignment. Good gaps. Once again, before you go spot welding the edges here, you want to you want to just make sure that skin's fitting to the quarters. You may have to twist the the boot skin and frame just to get it sit nice and nice and even in the apertures before spot welding the edges. And this is the finished edge after the skinning tool and after it's been hammered around. Just sitting nice and tight. All sealed up. And that's the uh, finished boot skin there. No file marks on there. That's just, just hammered over by hand. Um, and then press over with the skinning tool as well. It's got all the proper curves and shapes as they should do. Uh, nice reverse curves on the outer sides. Nicely finished off, nice straight piece of steel, no rust, the reverse curve on the top back edge there. There we go, Southern Classics and Customs. Cheers guys.